manga spoilers, by the way. In the second selection arc, after Team Isagi's tragic loss to the top three, aka Team Reen, not only losing the match but also losing a friend in the process, Isagi decides to drop the nice guy act and decide to climb back to the top if it's the last thing he does, devouring anyone who gets in his way, including the king. Baro. In chapter 58, after beating Team Naruhaya and Baro, Team Isagi gains a new member, that being Baro. But during the next match, we're gonna see something shocking from not only Isagi, but from Baro as well. In the kickoff between Team White with Isagi, Nagi, and Baro versus Team Red with Chigiri, Kunigami, and Reo, we start the match with Isagi passing the ball to Baro, claiming that their chemical reaction will be the key to decide this match. But right away, we see Kunigami pressing Baro, saying that he'll be the one to drag him down from his throne. With Kunigami's defensive style of him closing in and backing off his body to stop Baro's shots, it creates an anti-Baro marking that makes use of Kunigami's physique. As Isagi comes in telling Baro to pass to him to create a 1-2, Baro tells him to mind his own business as he states that he can get past Kunigami all by himself. As Nagi asks Isagi what he'll do, Isagi tells Nagi to just stay in the enemy lines and he'll make up for Baro and try to connect the path forward. But that's when Reo comes in at Isagi asking him what can he even do. As Reo tells Isagi to brace himself, Reo states that Nagi is a treasure that he found and that with this match, he'll steal him back from Isagi. While Reo is marking Isagi, he continues to tell Baro to pass, but of course, the king ignores him. And as Reo leaves Isagi and, and charges towards Kunigami and Baro, making it a 2 on 1, Reo steals the ball from him. As both Kunigami and Reo are charging at Isagi, Isagi has no other choice but to stop them in the final line. And until the last movement of whether Reo will push forward or pass to Kunigami, Isagi then finally decides that he'll keep a distance where he'll be able to react to both. And as Reo passes the ball, Isagi thinks that it's a pass to Kunigami, and as he tries to cut the pass, we see that it actually wasn't a pass to Kunigami, but to Chigiri. But that's when Nagi appears, saying that he's been waiting for him, saying that when he trapped the ball, he knew that he'd have to slow down, claiming that he'd caught up to him. Chigiri says that it's just one moment. As he starts to increase his speed tremendously, Nagi admits that it's his first time facing Chigiri like this, but... To a tedious extent, Chigiri is way too freaking fast. As Isagi realizes that their formation has been completely destroyed, saying that Kunigami, Reo, and Chigiri all understand each other's weapons, and by drawing out each other's abilities, they're surpassing Baro and Nagi at a rapid rate, saying that this is Chigiri, Kunigami, and Reo's high level try session as Chigiri scores the first goal for Team Red. As Nagi admits that Team Red is strong, he also states that he started to heat up, and Isagi states that suddenly he wants to crush them. As we restart the match with Isagi stating that he'll combine both blind spots and off the ball movements, and with his spatial recognition ability, he has created a new field vision. As the possibilities he couldn't see before seem to be overflowing endlessly, Isagi passes the ball to Baro, trying to get Rayo to focus on him. Because once he does, the movement of his center of gravity when he looks at him will change and that's when Isagi will push to the opposite side. Isagi's path to the goal has been opened up completely, so now he tells Baro to pass to him. But as usual, the king ignores our protagonist. But Kunigami notices that, so he takes this opportunity to steal the ball from this greedy king. As Nagi and Isagi have to turn back to defend, Nagi tells Isagi that he'll do something about Chigiri, but Isagi has to focus on Reo to make sure that he doesn't get the ball. And as Isagi acknowledges that, he also knows that Kunigami can't be let loose in a place like this, as this is his range and that he'll just burst through. And while he's saying this, we see Kunigami take the shot from his shooting range, scoring the second goal for Team Red. As we restart the match with Isagi saying that he'll have to find an option that'll let him create a chemical reaction with the three of them, Isagi states that when he tries to focus on finding a play that lets Baro score, the pass course to him completely dies out. But the possibilities for goals come endlessly when it comes to Nagi, as he moves in ways where it lets Isagi pick up his movements easily.
As Isagi hits a fast pass to Nagi, Nagi says to Chigiri that no matter how fast he is, humans can't suddenly go backwards, with him also hitting an insane touch in the opposite direction. While saying that, creating a shot course while leaving our speedster behind, creating a chemical reaction between him and Isagi as Nagi scores the first goal for Team White. With the only thing left to do is for Isagi to create a chemical reaction with Baro. As we restart the match, we see Rayo with the ball as he approaches Isagi. Rayo asks Isagi why Nagi chose someone like him, who is only good for direct shots. As Isagi still has no idea what Rayo is talking about, we see Rayo blitz past Isagi, and even though he doesn't have Chigiri's speed or Kunigami's physique, he can't be stopped with using basic abilities. As he passes the ball to Kunigami, Kunigami decides to push through with a 1-2 with Rayo. As they successfully do so, we see Isagi notice that when it comes to Team Red, Rayo is definitely the core, with Chigiri and Kunigami being their specialties. As Rayo passes the ball to Chigiri, Nagi is right on his tail as he tells Chigiri that he won't let him pass, but Chigiri then tells Nagi not to lump him with Baro as he's not all about pushing through. Chigiri then centers the ball, and as Isagi thinks that the ball will land in front of Rayo, we see Kunigami come out of nowhere breaking through them and headering the ball into the net, scoring the third goal for Team Red. With Team White being in quite the predicament, as he compares the situation to a knight fighting a dragon after losing an arm, with Baro being that arm, stating that they can't win, Isagi struggles to think of a way to turn the tables. But that's when we see him recall the wise words of Naruhaya when he called Isagi a genius in terms of adaptation. With these words, Isagi realizes what he has to do, with that being to devour Baro. Isagi says that in order to win the match, he has to change his way that he uses his abilities, and instead of expecting anything from Baro, he'll just focus on devouring him, and by doing so, he'll be able to control the field, and with that, Isagi tells Nagi that they'll win with just the two of them telling Nagi to pay close attention to him. As our genius accepts this task, we restart the match with Nagi passing the ball to Isagi. Isagi has the ball, but he notices that Team Red is being cautious about Nagi's movements. And since Chigiri can't stop Nagi on his own, Rayo is marking Isagi in a way where he can't pass to him. But without a doubt, the common belief on the field is that Baro is completely and utterly useless. So in spite of all this, Isagi chooses to go to Baro. As he dribbles towards Baro, Kunigami decides to stick to Baro, not allowing him to escape. But little does he know that this is all according to Isagi's plan, with baiting Kunigami with Baro's charges, stating that his true aim is to pass to the genius Nagi. And as he does just that, everybody is completely shocked. As Nagi tries to trick Chigiri with a trap, Rayo warns him just in the nick of time. Nagi has the ball, but Baro shouts out to him to pass to him before he loses the ball. But we see Kunigami still man marking him like crazy. But as everyone is focused on what Nagi will do next, Nagi notices something, something that no one else on the field has caught on to yet. And in that moment, we see Isagi burst out from the blind spots of everyone on the field but Nagi. In order for Isagi to get himself in front of the goal, he used Baro as bait. Nagi passes the ball to Isagi, and as it's now between him and the blue lock man goalkeeper, Isagi says that if he can't find the light leading him to the goal, then he'll just have to become that light. As everyone on Team Red is shocked, we see Isagi tell Baro to watch him, as he states that this is his way of adapting to him, adding on to that saying that the darkness that Baro has created on the field, he'll devour it and turn it into light, with Isagi shooting the ball and managing to get the second goal for Team White. As Team White is about to make a serious comeback, we see Isagi tell Baro that he can keep playing as he has already and to make sure not to drag the rest of the team down. As the King is confused at these disrespectful remarks, we see Isagi tell it to him straight, telling Baro not to get in their way. After that cold panel, we restart the match. As we see Rayo and Isagi match up against each other, Rayo knows that it's dangerous to face Isagi the way that he is right now, and because of this he decides to pass the ball to Chigiri, and right when he gets it, he decides to pass the ball straight to Kunigami. 
but Barrow tries to steal the ball being that no one on Team White is passing to him. And as he does get possession of the ball, before Kunigami, Nagi runs with him telling Barrow to pass. But Barrow denies his request and right as the king is nearing the goal, he then gets double pressed by both Kunigami and Rayo, ultimately losing the ball. But in that moment, we see Isagi come in clutch to get this loose ball. Rayo realizes that when Baro stole the ball from Kunigami, Isagi predicted that he'd lose the ball, so he'd position himself exactly to where he'd be able to get this loose ball. As Isagi has the ball, we see Chigiri try to stop him. But right before he could, Isagi passed the ball to our genius Nagi Seishiro as he scores the third goal tying up the match of this insane game. The battlefield in its current state is now being controlled by both Isagi and Nagi. As we restart the match with Ireo passing the ball to Chigiri, Chigiri mentions that Nagi already knows his weakness being the moment he traps the ball. And that once he gets the ball, he slows down. And in spite of that, Chigiri decides to take it up a notch by bouncing the ball to where he's headed without stopping, a no-break dribble. Baro tries to stop Chigiri, but Chigiri easily evades him. With this new running style of his, Chigiri scores Team Red's fourth goal, stating that him and his speed won't be controlled by the likes of Isagi and Nagi. But after this happens, we see Isagi say to Baro, who's still on the ground after his failed tackle, that there's no way someone who's crawling in front of him could ever become the number one striker in the world. As we go a bit over Baro's backstory, we see Baro steal the ball from the kickoff and try to score from the kickoff line. But as it always has, the goalie has blocked it in the nick of time. As Kunigami tries to get this loose ball, we see Nagi quick to mark him. Kunigami passes it to Rayo, but Isagi comes in out of nowhere as he predicted the pass. But before Isagi could get the ball, we see Rayo manage to kick it away. Baro then chases the loose ball, saying that this is his big chance that'll make him the main actor of the field again. As he sees his shooting zone open, he charges for it. But that's when Chigiri charges from behind him, as he tells the king that he's one step behind as he catches up to Baro. Baro has no idea what to do as his absolute field is right in front of him. But during this instant, we see Isagi in Baro's zone telling Baro to pass to him. And this is truly when the king felt true fear for the first time. Because of this terror, he subconsciously passed the ball to Isagi, and unfortunately, like the weak bowing down as Isagi gets the ball, Baro was forced to realize that the true main actor on the field was none other than Isagi Yoichi as he scores the fourth goal as he tells Baro to move for his sake. As Baro's world starts to crumble at the feet of Isagi as he experiences what a loss truly feels like, we see Baro think about the last play and how he subconsciously passed the ball to Isagi. Baro states that what he feels like what he did to other people telling them to pass to him came full circle back to him. Baro was forced to realize two things, one, that the main actor of Blue Lock was Isagi, and two, that he wasn't the king. As Team Red acknowledges Isagi as a full lethal threat, they think of a plan in order to keep the ball away from him. Isagi and Nagi also try to think of a play as well, but Nagi mentions that Chigiri is bad news and if he does that trap, er, that no break dribble that he did earlier, then he'll surely score. But Isagi says that they'll just have to stop him before that. As Nagi asks if they should let Baro know about their plan, Isagi says that a fallen king like him is utterly useless in this situation, and that the ending of the last play will be decided by him and Nagi. As we restart the match, we see Rayo trying to get a read on what Isagi is planning to do next. But as he realizes that their attacking plan has already been completely read, we see Rayo pass the ball to Kunigami. But considering the risk of either keeping the ball or passing it to Chigiri, Kunigami passes it right back to Rayo. As he thinks that him and Kunigami can't attack, he then snaps out of it, telling himself that he will beat Isagi in a one-on-one. -on -one. As Rayo tries to lure Isagi closer in to create a path to Chigiri, he successfully does just that. And as he passes to Chigiri, stating to Isagi that he's won, Chigiri tries to get the ball. But that's when we see Nagi charging straight towards the ball to steal it. As Isagi tells Rayo that they've been waiting for this, proving that the whole situation was in the palms of Isagi's hands, 
we see Nagi manage to reach the ball just in time. And as the ball goes flying, we see it land at the feet of the Fallen King, Baro Shoe. As Baro now has possession of the ball, he states that the field is shining for the sake of Isagi's goal, but for some reason, he doesn't feel upset. As Nagi also comes into play, Baro says that for the first time, both Isagi and Nagi are showing him a vision of a goal, and if he passes, they'll definitely score and win the match, and he can actually contribute to the victory. And as he's about to pass, to create this chemical reaction between the three of them as a supporting role, he then is stopped by his intuition. He then starts to imagine his life if he passes the ball, him in a small room in office clothing while watching Isagi play in the World Cup instead of him, and because of that, Baro doesn't want to live through that. And because of this, we see Baro do a chop feint against Kunigami and dribble past him. As he sees a dark path leading him towards the goal, Rail tries to get the ball, but Baro then does another feint and dribbles past him as well. As Rail questions if Baro is going through an awakening at the moment, we see Baro use Isagi as a screen and dribble past Chigiri. Baro says to Isagi that now it's his turn to devour him, stating that if Isagi and Nagi are the main actors of the field, then he'll just have to devour that light and become the villain. As he shoots an amazing power shot straight into the net, impressing both Isagi and Nagi, he scores the fifth goal for Team White, winning the match. As he screams out, reclaiming his title of the king. As they now get to choose someone from Team Red, everyone has different opinions, with Baro wanting Kunigami and Nagi wanting Rayo. But Isagi reminds them that the key to winning the second selection are chemical reactions, and that he wants an asset who will devour them right back. And with that, everyone has the same idea in their mind. And Team White decides to choose none other than the speedster Chigiri Hyoma, as he was the only one biting back at them. As Isagi tells Chigiri to join him, saying that his legs are needed, we see Chigiri tell Kunigami before he leaves that he will be waiting for him at the top. And with that, those four advance to the fourth stage of the second selection, while Kunigami and Rayo are left with no choice but to go back to the second stage. Hey guys, Dark Hero Josh here, and if you enjoyed this video on how Baro truly felt fear for the first time against Isagi, then please be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and comment down below what other moments from Blue Lock or any other anime slash manga do you guys want to see me do next on the channel. And without further ado, I hope you guys have a great day, and see ya.